Right, it's time to split the crankcase. The manual says there are three 8mm bolts. That's going to be that one, that one, and there's one at the back. And 12 6mm bolts, and I've identified those. They've all been prepped. Um, I know this is a bit of an aside, but back in the day, in the 60s and late 50s, 60s, my uncle used to work at Jaguar Engine Development and the two things he was passionate about were one, never use a ratchet to undo nuts, um, you should use a breaker bar and then use your ratchet to wind them out and secondly not to use a torque wrench. Um, he was proud of the fact he'd never used a torque wrench in his life um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but particularly with old engines when you're talking them back with stretched bolts or bolts that have been under a lot of stress, being slavish to torque settings can cause problems. He used to say, tighten it down with a feel. That was fine for him because he was doing it all day every day. Um, but I'm going to go when I reassemble it with my torque wrench, defying him in some ways and um, using the minimum setting. So I'm going to take off all these bolts now. I've got my little diagram, as I did with the head bolts. I'm going to take them out and measure them for length and their position on this little diagram. And uh, I'll put a still of that on so um, you can see where they come from. So here we go. This is all the um, top crankcase bolts to come out. And then it has to be flipped over and all the bottom ones come out. Oh, and again, the other thing I'm going to do is, although there's no uh, slackening or tightening sequence for these top ones, I'm just going to use basic principles of going sort of across round rather than just taking them round so there's no stress on the case. Just I'll, I'll do it till I hear the click and then I'll take one each out separately and I'll measure them and show where they come from. Okay, here we go. Okay, so no issues there. As I say, all I'm going to do now is take these bolts out one at a time. They're all loose now. One at a time, take them out and uh, measure them and put them on my little chart. Now that the bolts are out at the top, I'm taking the bottom uh, crankcase bolts out, but I've elected to take this sump off as well. Bit of disappointment that this uh, area here has obviously had some damage in the past, it's been welded. There is a lot of oil around the bottom of the engine, that may just be over the years, it may be leaking out of there. So I'm going to have to get that uh, tested by some engineers and if necessary do a bit more mm, aesthetically pleasing welding on the bottom here. But that'll all get done um, after it's all been uh, aqua blasted or jet blasted or sonic vapoured or whatever they're going to do to um, sort that out. So at the moment I'm just going to take this sump off um, and uh, take it from there. Right, so the manual says remove the two 12mm bolts at the front. So I'm guessing that's that one and that one and then it says 10 10 millimeter bolts which has got to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 but it does say in the manual don't forget that on the CB 550 model there's one in the sump now, I took the sump off and I think the 404 has got one in the sump as well unless it's not a 400 engine so I'm a bit confused Although the top part of the engine says it's a 400 on the uh, number. So I don't know if the manual's got that wrong or I've got it wrong. But anyway, the, uh, they're the bolts. And I'm going to follow the diagram in the manual for undoing these to release the tension. And we'll see what happens with that. Right, 
Right, even more confusion now because the diagram for the bolt tightening sequence on the two engines is different. Um, the diagram's here. Now this says it's the 404 model and this says it's the 550 model and yet the numbering sequence just doesn't seem right. Um, it mentions two bigger bolts at the front. Well, I've taken them out and they're not bigger, which is confusing because that one is definitely the same type of bolt as that. So I'm just going to keep going and uh, hopefully we'll work out what's going on. I don't know if there was two different models or well, what's going on. Don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Now, according to the manual, when you split the crankcase halves, everything should stay in the top half. And of course, it hasn't because this lot here has stayed in the bottom half. And there seems to be, I don't know what this bit here is. Um, it's like a plasticky, fibery thing. And somehow, I've either missed that in the manual taking this prime, well, this is the uh, front sprocket. Either I've missed that somewhere, um, or the manual's wrong. It's probably me missing it, but now I've got all this gearbox cluster, which is loose apart from that bit, stuck in the top half. So I'm having a bit of a panic because of all the gear. I also took this little unit apart here, which is the primary drive shaft, and loads of little bits fell out. Um, I'll come back to that and show you how that goes back together in a minute. But uh, this is the sort of panic you have when you first start doing an engine. So, this lifts off the primary chain. That's bagged. That's the primary chain up out the way. Now, this little cluster here just lifts out. Now, on the bottom here there's two, well there's one little lump there that fits in the bottom of that end a bit there. I'm not going to take this shaft to bits and also this end seal that goes into there. There's actually a, a notch for that to go in there and there is a ring there for everything. Um, phew, I'm just going to leave that for the moment I think. That goes in the bottom. No, I'm going to take it out very gently and put it on there. So that's all goes back in there with that. And put that in a bag as well. I'm not taking that to bits. Don't want to. Don't want to. Okay. So as it turns out, this uh, gearbox uh, or the gears that I thought was stuck in the bottom half um, that's actually a big seal on the end and there it is there this seal um, it just just lifted out with a bit of, bit of persuasion and that's the position it should be in the actual top half of the crank um, just because of that tight seal not a problem None of the gears seem to be broken or uh, affected, so I'm just going to put them in a bag and seal them up ready for a reassembly. Now I'm taking out the cam chain tensioner. There's the actual adjuster locking bolt and system that goes in there, uh, in the top. In the back there, there's a, another one that goes out, this little smaller one, which goes onto the end of this shaft. Um, I'm just going to take these bolts out now. Use the magnet. And that unit, I'm thinking, will just now lift clear. Yep, so that pulls out on that square. And that unit there lives there. So that actually goes into a hole there, so there's a dowel bit there, that goes into there first, and you can squidge that in, 
to get this unit back in to hold it down so that just presses against that cam there. <laughs> 